exactly 6 p.m. on an evening in June, a pillowcase containing a woman's purse was dropped on the laundry chute of a Philadelphia hotel. The purse contained $25,000. The source of the money and why it changed hands in so furtive a manner is the subject of tonight's Crusader, starring Brian Keith. Matt Anders, magazine feature writer. I'd barely finished an article on the activities of the Federal Crime Commission when I got a call from the Commission Counsel, an attorney named Walter Cronin. He requested a midnight meeting in an apartment in the East 80s. I went. Come in. Cronin. Glad you could come, Anders. This is Ben Weber, one of my staff. Ben Anders. Anders. Sit down, Anders. Anders. How'd you like to do a job for the commission? Why me? I just read a series of articles you wrote in 1951. The deliberate smuggling of diseased plants in the United States. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Reds pulled that in Korea. You learned a lot about horticulture. I should have. I worked on this for six months. Well, I don't have six months to teach a man what you already know. You have to plant smugglers? No. Ernie Ducek. Ducek the racketeer? You couldn't prove that by his record. No arrests, no indictments, no convictions. In the last four years, he hasn't even had a traffic ticket. But he manages to live like a king in a Philadelphia penthouse. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is, it's new and it's clever, and we got to get somebody close to him. Fortunately, he has a hobby. What's it? That's why your articles are so interesting. Ducek knows us. He doesn't know you. Well, how am I supposed to get to him? You won't have to. We'll make him come to you. Show him the map, then. Ducek drives through Camden, New Jersey, every weekday on his way from Philadelphia to the track. There's a restaurant near this corner. He always has lunch there. The store next to the restaurant is a florist shop. You're going to buy it. And load it up with roses, huh? Mm-hmm. Here. Have a look at these. License and other papers in the name of Matt Parker. From now on, that's you. Looks like I got a criminal record, too. Huh? Two years in San Q for armed robbery, and you're wanted for jumping parole. Ducek's liable to have friends in prison. Trustees have been known to get in files, you know? We hope so. If one does, he'll find a record on you. Buy it? Yeah. With uh, one little extra touch, I want to use this floor shop as a front for booking horses. I figure Ducek will open up a lot faster if he knows I'm making a dishonest buck. We'll go with it. Ben will drop you off near home. Oh, and leave all future contact to us, hmm? All right. Local police were quietly notified of the fake bookmaking setup. Cronin and Ben Weber arranged for the staff to phone in bets periodically. Meanwhile, they kept the shop supplied with a variety of roses, including bush cuttings. It was three weeks before we hit the right one. Where are you going now? Oh, you and your roses. What did I tell you in the restaurant? I said to keep your mouth shut. I can do it for you? Yeah. What are those? Sweet peas? No, no, no. The roses. Oh, they're uh, Irish fire flames. Hmm. Never seen any of these before. They're a single hybrid tea rose. Tea rose, coffee rose. We're going to miss the first race. What you're going to miss is your front teeth. You want to shoot off your mouth? Get out and wait in the car with Chuck. Come on, if you Get out in the car. She's horse happy. <laughs> got cuttings on these? Well, I got a few that are not very good, though. 
You, you know anything about roses? I raise them. Excuse me. Where's flowers? Oh, uh, well, look, I uh, got a customer in here right now. You want to call me back? Yeah, all right, give it. Yeah. Five and five. Right. All right. Mr. Uh... Ernie Ducek. Had this place long? About a month. Last fellow who was here was Gardenia Happy. Never had anything in the window but Gardenias. Sorry. It was another horse bet call. I played KG while I was taking it. Trying to make it sound like an order for flowers, but making sure Ducek knew it wasn't. Nice phone business. Yeah, we do all right. Now, you want some of those bushes? I can order them for you. Sure, you do that. How much action are you booking? It's on your mind. Nice front. Most of the boys use pay booths in candy stores, so they haul up in some cellar. You give the business a little class. You sell flowers. You book horses. I know a phone bet when I hear one. I give you nine to five. I can find bet slips in a scratch sheet. You ain't going in there without a warrant. Do I look like a cop? No, you look like a small-time hood selling protection. What's the matter? You don't like protection? No. You figure you're gonna shake me down, you're gonna get a lot of flowers when you ain't gonna be able to smell them. Now get out of here. Take it easy. Where you come from? Why? It ain't from around here or you'd know. Ernie Ducek don't cut in on no two-bit bookie joints. We ain't no society leader. I'm no small-time hood. Ask around. And don't forget to order them bushes. I'll be back. Ducek stopped in several times a week after that, but for the next month he acted like a customer. I had to get closer to him and the roses with a key. I sold him a bush that was showing faint traces of black rust. When he transplanted it, I knew the disease would spread to the rest of his roses. It did. Ten days after he bought the contaminated bush, I was called to the penthouse overlooking the city of brotherly love. Look, look at them. They're dying. Some bug is eating them alive. No bug. It's black rust and plant disease. I can fix it. I'll be back tomorrow. What's the matter with right now? What do you want me to do? Breathe on them? I gotta get some stuff. Whatever you need, I'll get it. Chuck! Chuck! What are you trying to do? Wake up the dead? Where is he? Crazy or something, you know where you sent him. Okay, then you'll have to go out. Tell her what to get. I have sulfur and fern in these quantities right here. A couple of hand sprays, that's all. Okay. It's after 10 o'clock. Where am I gonna get that stuff? Break a window. Wake somebody up. But get it. You're crazy, I can't find this. Uh, Let me start without it. Well, we gotta strip off all these dead leaves before we can spray it, so uh, that one's a wreck. Start on that. Okay. You're all right, Parker. You're all right. It's almost two o'clock. This is the last one. Want a drink? No, you go ahead. Okay. Betty. Betty! Come on, come on, snap out of it. Fix me a drink. Chuck's back. Where is he? He's in the kitchen eating. Tell him I want him. Oh, don't move. I'll breathe for you. Oh. Hitler wants you. When'd you get back? An hour ago. How'd it go? Parker's all right. It was easy. No rumble? No. Good. Sure you want to change your mind? No. 
Parker, how'd you like to work for me? I don't like working for anybody. No. Where are you going to get with a flower shop and a crummy book? Want to grow roses? Grow them here. For how much? Plenty. Same as Chuck gets. About 100000 a year. You find yourself another sucker. A bigger sucker than you I couldn't find. You're not setting me up to take some kind of rap for you. Why me, anyway? I don't know nothing about me. Chuck, tell him. Spent two years in queue for armed robbery. Very smart. Smarter than you. At least we don't leave witnesses. Like you did in your stick-up. Oh, you're talking about murder. That's what it is. You call it smart? It is when it looks like an accident. And we kill strangers. Now, where's a murder rap without a motive? Well, you gotta get paid someplace. Insurance money. Are you kidding? Insurance companies check up on you as soon as you file a claim. Do you think I insure myself? Guys get married. Some are sorry they did. A businessman decides he hates his partner. Sometimes a guy insures his mother-in-law. And sometimes they just get tired of waiting for people to die. So we help them. By half the policy. So, uh... How you collect? Why don't you stay here tonight? Chuck will take you for your things in the morning. And we'll explain the details later. Like when? After you've made your first kill. In the morning, Duchak had Chuck drive me to Camden to close the shop. I convinced him it wouldn't look good if I didn't cancel the lease and return the stock to the wholesalers. I had to take a chance on dialing a special contact number Walter Cronin had given me. Hello? I made it sound like a business call. Cronin got the idea right away. We'll have somebody there this afternoon, Mr. Parker. Trouble? I don't know. He's closing the shop. Couldn't he talk? No, somebody must be breathing down his neck. You better go to Philly. Take Rennie with you. Buy work clothes and borrow a truck from a wholesale florist. I want the score as soon as you know. Right. I only count on 31 ferns, Mr. Parker. Well, there were three dozen. How long is this going to take? I don't know. He learns how to count. Ernie's waiting. Well, call him. I didn't ask you to hang around here. It's disconnected. What are you trying to do? Save a few bucks for your old age? I'll use the one in the restaurant. All right, what's their line? Very nice. Murder syndicate. They cut up insurance money. I'm pulling you out right now. Oh, you can't do that. You're going to smell it and you'll never get close to him. You got any line on that guy? From Chuck Donnelly? Yeah, we got to make on him. He pulled a single bit in Denimara for A&B with a deadly weapon. We drove Duchek to the track yesterday and came back with him, but somewhere between 6 o'clock last night and 1 o'clock this morning, he killed somebody. In Philly? Too close to home. He couldn't have gone far, except by air. We'll take his mug shot down to the airline stewardesses. Must have been a short flight. He probably landed around 12 o'clock, so find out what city he was in. They don't check the local police for a murder. No. Fatal accident. They like the double indemnity clause. Besides, the beneficiary will have an airtight alibi. Takes 10 days before a claim is paid. And you're going to need help from the banks. Beneficiary will collect half in cash. It's going to have it paid in marked bills. You're calling it, Matt. But I'm going to alert all law enforcement agencies. Don't slip up any place or they'll kill you. There's only one place I can slip up. Where? It's when they send me out to kill somebody else. For more than a week, I took care of Duchek's roses. During that time, it was impossible for me to make contact with Cronin or Weber. When Duchek went to the track, he took me and the others along. Then one afternoon, he didn't go. Hello? All right. 
Now do exactly what I told you. Six sharp and make sure you got the right time. All right. Bye. Baltimore pay office ready? Who goes? Betty. You got an hour. Take a bus to downtown. Walk through a couple of department stores, then grab a cab to the Hotel Chalet. Get there about five minutes to six. Go down the service stairs to the basement. Find the laundry room. There's a chute. At six sharp, a blue pillowcase will come down. Be a woman's handbag in it with the money. So don't take a purse with you. Come back as soon as you make the pickup. Look, I'll uh, walk down the bus with her. I want to get some cigarettes. There's a whole carton in the kitchen. I ain't been out all day. That's all right. Maybe you'll be out all night. You think I'm that easy to cross? Look, I just want to get some air. You want to grab that dough for yourself? I'm not making any around here. Chuck, give me that stuff. Her name is Lorraine Belker. At 6.30 that night, I was on a train to Wheeling, West Virginia, where Mrs. Lorraine Belker and her husband owned an all-night restaurant. Chuck stayed right on me until the train pulled out. He pretended to leave, but I saw him swing back on again a couple of cars behind. The train was a milk run type. I didn't miss a whistle stop. But I couldn't get off and phone without Chuck seeing me. Sorry. Why don't you sit down, Elizabeth? It's rolling. <laughs> All right, thank you. Would you care to look at one of these? No, thanks. Is Chuck Donnelly in this car? Who are you? Miss Freeling. I'm a secretary with the commission. Weber was following you. He saw Donnelly get on the train. He's two cars back. How did you get here? He passed you on the Limited and waited at the last station. I get off in Allentown and relay any messages you have. I'm supposed to kill a woman in Wheeling. Her name's Lorraine Belker. I don't know if you can remember all of it. I take it down in shorthand. Just keep an eye on the rear platform in case Donnelly comes through. I briefed her on the setup as quickly as I could. By the time the conductor called the stop at Allentown, she had it all. I left the train at Wheeling and picked up the stolen bakery truck. Chuck had a rental car waiting. I tried to shake him, but I didn't know the town well enough. I did know that Mrs. Belker worked the morning shift. She always left her house at 4.45 a.m. and drove to the restaurant. This morning, her car wasn't supposed to be working. I was supposed to pick her up, drive her to a spot between the house and town, shove her out and run her over, then ditch the car. At exactly 4.45 a.m., I was in front of the house. And so was she. woman. Cronin called us. We've got Mrs. Belker in protective custody. Got any instructions for me? You still being followed? About a block behind us. Keep straight ahead. I'll tell you what turns to lose him on. When you get clear, drop me and go back to do check. What's the idea? We'll tell Belker his wife is dead. Then accuse him of conspiracy. We may get a confession. Meanwhile, Cronin wants do check to think it's business as usual. It was a killing in Baltimore. I know. Same game as this one, hit and run with a stolen car. Man insured his business partner for 50000 double indemnity. He's in Philadelphia now. 
They'll take him when he makes payoff. It's already been made. Impossible. His room has been watched. He should have watched his laundry. Take this right. Just picked him up at the airport. He was out of town, too. His plane got in a little later than yours. Parker says everything went okay in Wheeling. That's nice. Yeah, that was a simple job. I'll no. talk, you listen. Chuck followed you. Oh. You followed me. Stop it. Stop it or I'll pull it all right through the middle of your back. He followed me. You know he did. You lost him deliberately. What didn't you want him to see? I don't know it was him. It could have been the wheeling cops. I'm driving around in a hot truck with a dame. You knew it was me. How? You gonna recognize somebody looking through a rear mirror in the middle of the night? A guy a block behind you? What if I got picked up for speed and trying to lose him? Yeah, you didn't. That's enough! What did you want him to do it for? He wanted to make sure of you. And so did I. Long distance? I ought to put a call through to Wheeling, West Virginia. No, no special party. Just connect me with the county morgue. The gun in Duchek's hand began to look bigger as he was connected with the morgue and wheeling. He started to give a description of Mrs. Belker. He was smarter than I'd thought. My only prayer was for Cronin to be smarter. Yeah? No, no, you don't have to. Thanks very much. What'd they say? I told you he was all right. They identified a body? Yeah. You were satisfied? All right. Now, uh, I don't like being treated like I'm in jail around here, and I'd like to get a little of that uh, money I got coming, too. Want a couple hundred now? Yep. You're a sheriff of Baltimore. She forgot the key again. Making a search with a warrant. Hello, Ernie. Don't your boss ever get tired? He gets tired of you. The other gentlemen are Philadelphia detectives. This time they want you. What for? For a murder in Baltimore last week and one that didn't quite happen in Wheeling this morning. You're out of your mind. Now, I do check. Belker confessed to your deal ten minutes ago. And his wife is still alive. Don't look at me. I'm with him. If the woman is still alive, there's no murder. It was in Baltimore. You got a pocket full of marked bills that ties you right to it. Take him down with the other one. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's a girl, too. She's a blonde. Yeah, I know. We picked her up downstairs in the beauty parlor. This, uh, the bait? Not nice? Screw it myself. <laughs> <laughs> 